Hello YouTube! In the 21st century, we know quite a lot about the influence of the Sun on our planet. But in the 20th century, in Russia, lived a man who knew much more than I believe is known today about the Sun's effects on our planet. And with the recent developments, I think we should hear him out even though he's long gone. But we do have some of his writings and uh, notes that he left behind. I'm speaking about Alexander Chizhevsky, who lived between 1897 to 1964, who was an outstanding Russian thinker. He was a giant of his country's science. He was also a prisoner in the Soviet concentration camps in the Gulag. Chizhevsky was the founder of heliobiology, studying the influence of solar activity on biological and social processes and psychic powers, and worked in the areas of experimental biophysics and hematology. He also wrote poetry and literary criticism and taught history and archaeology. His unpublished manuscripts are kept in the archives of the Russian Academy. Good luck trying to get access. Chizhevsky described life on Earth as an echo of the Sun. The Sun, our nearest star, contains approximately 99.8% of the mass in the solar system and has the strongest thermal, electromagnetic and gravitational influence on our planet. Chizhevsky found many links between the sunspot activity and general health issues. He made intensive studies of the correlation between solar-induced changes in the Earth's magnetic field and the occurrence of physical events. Listen to this. Such as epidemics of cholera, diphtheria, typhus, and smallpox. He also firmly believed that signs of human unrest or mass excitement such as revolutions and mass migrations followed the, the sunspot cycle. Using immense historical and statistical material, Chizhevsky showed that solar activity acts as an accelerator and moderator upon the whole biosphere, which manifests in the frequency and magnitude of events of population growth and decline, birth, death, harvests, heart attacks, emergencies, bank crashes, uh, catastrophes, suicides, and more. This is a result of the reaction of the planet's core to the changes in the electromagnetic corona of the sun. Remember it. I will get back to this. Chizhevsky collected data from 72 countries from the year 600 BC onwards. Because of his research, more is known today about the phenomenon of the geomagnetic field and its influence on biological processes. And another one of Chizhevsky's discoveries was very important too. It had been previously known that an animal or human may suffocate to death even when there is enough oxygen in the air if something elusive is absent from it. Chizhevsky identified the mysterious substance in the early 1920s. He proved uh, that when the concentration of negatively charged aero ions, known as superoxide anion radi radicals, when it becomes much lower than 1000 ions per millimeter of air, Oxygen molecules are poorly utilized by the organism, and if the net concentration of positively charged aero ions exceeds that of negative ions, a quick death by suffocation can follow. Devices based on his discovery were sold in a number of countries at the end of 1930s. Instead of light, the Chizhevsky chandelier radiated a stream of electrons that join to oxygen molecules, forming negatively charged 
oxygen ions. Now, more about Chizhevsky and his background. He belonged to the school of thought, of philosophy known as Russian Cosmism, uh, whose practic practitioners use the theoretical inquiry and empirical research to explore the history and philosophy of the origin, evolution and future existence of the universe and humankind. Cosms, cosmism, very hard to say, cosmisms, drew both from Eastern and Western philosophic traditions. Among its adherents were religious thinkers, philosophers, physical scientists, artists and poets. Their global approach generated new fields of biological and social study, such as exobiology, biophysics, planetary ecology, geomagnetic biology, and ecological psychology, or the psychology of life environment. Russian cosmism proposes that there is a common evolution of the biosphere and humanity. This notion became a secret impetus for pioneers of the Soviet space program, like Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, who believed that Earth is the cradle for humankind, and that sooner or later we will certainly move into space. Geologist and biochemist Vladimir Vernadsky was a leading light of Russian cosmism. He invented the concept of the biosphere in 1917 and in 1944 introduced the notion of the noosphere. In 1917, communists grabbed control over Russia and Russian cosmos were banned. Its practitioners were imprisoned or killed and the philosophy was largely forgotten. Tsiolkovsky, the proponent of space flight, and migration to other planets was fortunate in that he continued his research and writings and one can see some of the Russian cosmists ideal, ide, idealism in Russia's star city and the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. Chizhevsky experienced the heavy hand of communist ideologues to the fullest degree. He was not afraid to defend astrology and wrote that modern scientific discoveries actually bring us back to the knowledge of ancient Middle East. In 1929 he was invited to be a lecturer in biophysics at Columbia University in New York and also became a member of the French Toulon Academy of Sciences. The Soviet government supported Chizhevsky's research but could not forgive his independent thinking. He was called a pseudo-scientist and a charlatan, and in 1936 the newspaper Pravda called him an arrogant and false professor. In 1939 Chizhevsky was elected president of the first International Biophysical Congress in New York and was nominated for the Nobel Prize. But the Kremlin would not allow him to travel to the United States. In 1942 Chizhevsky was arrested and he spent the next 16 years in concentration camps, prisons and exile. He was finally allowed to return to Moscow in 1958, long after Stalin had died. The brave Russian scientist passed away in 1964. In 1965, the Soviet Academy of Sciences realized the loss they had suffered and created a special commi commission for full-scale research of Chizhevsky's archives. A small star was named in his honor long after his death. Who remember today those who persecuted him? But the world will remember Chizhevsky. Chizhevsky's ideas about the impact of solar energy on the earth are especially important now. If we pay heed to Chizhevsky's ideas, we might understand that increases in solar activity create a corresponding growth in Earth's cataclysmic events, earthquakes, droughts, wildfires, the melting of the polar ice caps, volcanic activity, hurricanes and tornadoes 
are just some manifestations of the sun's influence. All of them are on the increase. And our Earth is not the only planet of the solar system undergoing such changes. Our knowledge of the structure of the sun is incomplete, and much of our present knowledge has been discovered very recently. Chizhevsky never believed that his research projects were finalized, and there may be more discoveries in store for us. And this year, for example, not that long ago, in the summer of 2017, we found out through NASA that Sun is about to change form and that the solar minimum is on the way. The Sun is heading into a period known as solar minimum, during which activity the surface will change form. And in this time, NASA stated that certain times of activity, such as sunspots and solar flares, will drop. But it's also expected to bring the development of long-lived phenomena, including coronal holes. And I ask you to remember what Chizhevsky was saying. But according to NASA, solar minimum could also enhance the effects of space weather potentially disrupting communications and navigation systems and even causing space junk to hang around. The conventional wisdom states that solar activity swings back and forth like a simple pendulum. At one end of the cycle there should be quiet time with few sunspots and flares and at the other end solar Maximum brings high sunspot numbers and frequent solar storms. And allegedly this regular rhythm is to repeat every 11 years or so. But you see the reality actually is more, much more complicated. And I urge you to remember Chizhevsky's findings. What's important to us in terms of NASA findings is that there are areas, according to them, in Sun's atmosphere where the magnetic field opens up, sending streams of solar particles into space. When the resulting solar wind hits Earth's magnetic field, it can cause space weather events that include geomagnetic storms, uh, disruptions to communications, and even satellites. Uh, it can even affect the space debris floating around Earth. So, we are only learning about the influence of the Sun, and I put more faith in the findings of Chizhevsky than anything else that being proposed today. Uh, hopefully, there are scientists in Russia who have access to the uh, storage files of the Academy of Sciences and can bring up his long ago stated knowledge because things are happening and Sun is changing and we need to find out how it's going to affect our planet. Thank you.